The wound caused by my parents' death never really healed. I often had days when the pain was too much. The longing to see them again was too strong. I recently suffered through one of those days. It had been more than two years since my parents died, but the pain felt fresh and burned hot in my chest. I went back to one of our old family photo albums. It always helped to have a look through them, to reminisce about times gone. Here I was an infant in my mother's arms. There was the first day of school, and what followed were the pictures of various family trips. I went from page to page until I reached one of our many trips to small towns. My parents never took me to different countries. They were boring like that. Instead, we mostly went sightseeing in Germany. In the picture, my parents and I were hugging each other in front of a small restaurant, and I felt tears coming to my eyes once more when I saw us like that. It had been such a nice trip. A few minutes later, I decided it would be a great idea to take a trip over there and revisit the place. The picture was from a small town about an hour away from there. When I checked the town online through the pictures of our trip, it didn't seem to fit the scenery at all. The small restaurant had been in front of a backdrop of distant factories and industrial areas, but there were none in the town I was looking at. I was a bit baffled, but maybe the pictures were from a different trip. Mum must have put them in the wrong place or confused the names. God knows, she was always a bit scatterbrained. I scanned the picture for anything tangible and finally read the name of the restaurant. When I googled it, I got more than a dozen replies. It was a common name, after all. I looked at each of the results, but they were entirely different places. Great, I thought. The picture was from 15 years ago. The place is probably closed down by now. And still, even if the restaurant itself didn't exist anymore, it would be nice to visit the town itself. I continued my search, but in the end I had to give up. I couldn't remember the name of the town at all. There was no use in trying further. Instead, I posted the picture on a German subreddit to see if anyone would recognize the place. I didn't have much hope, considering it was a random small town, but eh, who knows. Maybe I'd get lucky. When I rechecked the thread later, I'd gotten a few replies. Some were wild guesses, others were dumb jokes. Well, not like I expected anything different. I left the post open for the time being and decided to prepare some dinner. When I came back, I had a handful of new replies, but none were helpful. I'd also gotten a message. Maybe someone had figured it out after all. The message, though, proved to be a bit strange. It was written by a poster somewhere in Germany who stated that he had a picture that looked almost exactly like mine. I wrote back to him and asked what he meant. I got a reply a couple minutes later, and this time he included an imager link of the picture he was talking about. As I looked at it, I was a bit weirded out. It was exactly the same as my picture, only with a different kid and family in it. Everything else was the same. The angle, the position his family stood at, hell, even the items in the window behind them, they were all identical. This had to be some sort of stupid joke. I sent the guy a message back, stating that he almost got me, and wow, his... Photoshop skills were really good. Of course he started to deny it, but I didn't bother to reply anymore. Soon another reply arrived, and the guy asked me if I had the other pictures of the supposed trip. What the hell was this guy's problem? Another message arrived, and I opened it and read the following. Hey, I I'm sure you're probably a bit creeped out by all this. Sorry about that. Do you have any pictures similar to the ones below? 
attached to the message were half a dozen imager links. When I clicked the first one, a feeling of recognition flooded over me. I took out the album of my old family trip again. I looked at the picture on the screen. It was of a young boy sitting on a bench with his mother in the middle of a park. Leaves littered the grass, and there was a small fountain in the background. When I looked at the pictures of my family trip, I started shivering. There it was again, an exact duplicate. There were leaves, the fountain, the bench in the park. The only differences were my mom and me. What the hell was going on here? I went and clicked through the rest of the imager links, and with each one, my head started to spin more. They were all exactly the same. The only difference was the people in the pictures. Was this some kind of sick joke someone was playing? But how could they have gotten a hold of all my pictures? I wrote him back asking how the hell he did it. And he replied that's what he was supposed to ask. Okay, this was getting weird, really weird. For a moment I wondered if it might all be just a coincidence. Maybe the two of us were there on the same day. Those things can happen, right? I opened his pictures again and started to search for the tiniest differences, but there was nothing. And I got an idea, and it was outlandish, silly even, but there was this nagging feeling in the back of my head. I sent him a picture of yet another trip my parents had taken me on. This one had led us to a different town in southern Germany. I was antsy. As I waited for his reply, I refreshed the page again and again. And after a couple of minutes, the red message sign popped up, and I clicked it instantly. There's something incredibly weird going on here. Why do you have that picture as well? I've got the same one in front of me right now. Attached to it was yet another imager link. When I clicked it, my eyes grew wide. It was the same picture. The only difference was that my dad and I were replaced by him and his dad. Everything else was the same. I replied to him and included my version of the picture, and for a long while I got no answer. It was half an hour later when I finally got one. We should meet. I don't know what's going on, but this must be somehow connected. Should I really meet this guy? Once more I thought about the possibility of this all being a sick joke, but it made no sense. All the pictures here were from an old-fashioned analog camera. They'd never been digitized in any way, so how the hell could this guy have them? Once more, I looked over all of them again. The situation was so utterly bizarre. I had to figure out what the hell was going on here, so... I finally agreed to meet the guy. He wrote me back his address, and we soon arranged on a time to meet. He urged me to bring any pictures similar to the ones I'd sent him. And after looking through my old photo albums for a while, I decided to take a few that included various family trips. It was about a week or so later that I went to meet this guy. It was a three-hour car ride. I felt strange and apprehensive the whole time. Who the hell was he? For a moment, the idea of a long-lost brother popped into my mind, but it made no sense at all. After that, I came up with the most absurd ideas. What if... What if he was some sort of doppelganger, an alternate reality version of myself? <sighs> no, it's not a freaking science fiction movie. Calm down, you idiot. When I finally arrived, I was relieved to find that the guy's house looked completely different from my own. Still, it took me a while to get out of my car. After I rang the doorbell, a chubby guy, almost twice my age, opened the door. And he was as surprised as me when he saw how different the two of us were. Hey, are you Michael? Yeah, you must be Steven, right? I nodded. Well, come in. Did you bring the pictures? Yeah, I brought the whole stack of them. The guy's place was messy, seriously messy. It looked as if it had been weeks, if not months, since he'd last cleaned. He didn't even seem to care as he led me into his living room. 
I looked up when I saw the whole side of the room was taken up by a giant desk. Multiple computers, monitors, and an assortment of tools covered it. When he noticed my stares, he showed me an awkward smile. Uh, sorry about that. I guess I'm a bit obsessed with the whole computer and internet thing. It's where I do most of my work, anyways. Oh, so you're a programmer? Yeah, something like that, yeah. The guy mumbled. Alright, well, I got the pictures, so... What do you think's going on here? The guy laughed for a bit. To be honest, I've got no clue. I thought it might be some weird coincidence, but... There are too many things that don't add up. When did you say you and your parents visited that restaurant again? I think it was back in 2005. Right, right. And you're how old? 24. What does that have to do with anything? Well, it's because I'm 36 and I took that same trip back in 1992. I had heard what he said, but he, I didn't understand it. How the hell could the pictures be identical if they were 13 years apart? You got it, right? So how the hell is any of this possible? The other picture you sent me, when were you there? Hold on, I opened my backpack and took out the other photo albums. It should be here somewhere, I said as I started to look through them. Here it is, let me see. Um, that one was back in 2002. Michael grimaced. Same trip. Only in 1990. Freaking hell, what the hell's going on here? He didn't answer, instead he rummaged through a cupboard and brought out stacks upon stacks of old pictures. Well, let's see if there's more. In the next hour, the two of us went through all of our pictures and compared our various trips. The result was that almost all of them were the same. At first we were utterly horrified and crept out, but in time the sheer surreality of the situation pushed us into a state of apathy. We went from picture to picture and compared them. Every once in a while we would laugh. One of us would shake their head, but nothing more. So what about your parents? How are they doing? I asked as I put another picture back into one of my albums. Both dead. They died about two years ago. In a car accident? Michael looked up at me puzzled. No, they both died in a fire. Oh, God. For a second I thought... What is it? I sighed. Well, mine died two years ago in a car accident. For a moment I thought it might have been the same for years. I don't know anymore. It's all way too strange. Michael said nothing. In the end, there wasn't much the two of us could do at the moment. We were both too confused, and we didn't have much to go on about. It was, our names were different, our birth dates, our birthplaces were different, and our parents, well, they weren't related in any way. For a while, we made wild guesses, and tried to consider what may be going on, but it was all nonsense. One afternoon turned to evening, I decided it was time to make my way back home. Before I did, though, we exchanged phone numbers and emails in case one of us could find anything. Michael took out copies of some of my old pictures and told me he'd have a look online. He knew certain people that could find out if any of the images were doctored. Only when I was in my car and drove home did I fully realize how bizarre everything was that had happened. The more I thought about it, the more anxious, sweaty, almost sick I felt. Once at home, I went to bed straight away, but sleep didn't come easy. My dreams were haunted by doppelgangers and plunged me into weird, alternate realities. When morning finally came, I was more tired and exhausted than the day before. I went to work, but I was barely functioning. It was in the early evening that I got a text from Michael telling me to check my email. He'd gotten some news for me. For the first time that day, I was fully awake. I signed into my email and opened the one Michael had sent me. In the email, he told me that someone had gotten back to him about the pictures. It was an older man from Russia who wrote he used to work in a print media company in the Soviet Union, and he remembered the picture right away. 
I looked up. What the hell? The Soviet Union? The man wrote he recognized the scene in the two pictures right away. He used to work with the original version. It was a somewhat popular stock photo often used in propaganda pieces in the late 70s. They all showed happy Russian families. Added to the email was the same picture once more. The family was a different one, but the scene was almost identical. There was one difference, though. All the German in the picture was replaced by words in the Cyrillic alphabet. How the hell was this possible? How the hell were my parents and me in a picture from a Russian propaganda piece? And then I realized that there was only one way. The picture of my parents and me, it had to be a fake. With shaking hands, I went through the photo albums again, looking at all the pictures of my parents and me. How many of them were real? How many were fake? Yet there was something else that crept slowly into my mind. Who had faked them, and most importantly, why? I was taken from my thoughts when the phone started to ring. It was Michael. It's not only that picture, he said in a shaken voice. Wait, hold on, what do you mean? Remember the trip to the lake? Another stock photo. Same with the one to the museum. Also, stock photos. But how? Why? God, if I knows. I'm talking to this guy right now, and I sent him a few more. He says that most of the pictures are taken from some photo series about Soviet towns. There's some, though, that he has no clue about. He noted that almost all of them looked like stock photos. Or have been doctored. You're trying to tell me that all the pictures here... I broke up. I couldn't say it. Yeah. They're all fake. Michael finished the sentence for me. But what does that... What the hell does that mean? My life? I mean, our lives? How could someone fake this? I got no answer from the other end of the line, only... Heard heavy, shaky breathing. <sighs> I don't know. I really don't look... I mean, I keep talking to this guy, and I'll see if there's anything else I can find out. Hey, Michael, what are you... But I didn't get to finish as he hung up. Fucking hell, I cursed. For the next few days, I was unable to do anything. I went through all the photos and photo, photo albums again. If, if all those were fake, then why did I have memories of the trips? How the hell could I remember visiting a freaking museum in the middle of Russia? Finally, I took out a picture of my parents. It was, it was two years ago, wasn't it? Memories of the police arriving at the door, the funeral. It was all still on my mind. Then I started to think about the funeral. For the first time, I really began to think about it. When exactly had it been? I knew it was two years ago, but what day, what month? Where had I been? It... it must have been in this town, right? I mean, this is where I grew up. I shook my head. I was out of it. I barely slept. My mind was fuzzy. Of course it had to be here, right? If I went to the graveyard, I'd, f I'd find their graves there. Suddenly a cold shower went down my spine. Where exactly was my parents' grave? I was about to set out when my phone rang again. It was Michael once more. I answered right away. Did you find anything new? Nothing. All I heard was shaky breathing and sobbing. Hello, Michael? Are you alright? <sighs> I, uh, I did. But no, it's not a story. Sorry, Steve. I'm sorry. Please, leave this thing alone. It's not worth it. Just forget about everything you found out. Nothing good will come of it. With that, he hung up again. And when I tried to call him, it went straight to voicemail. I didn't 
get what was going on. I wrote him a message on Reddit, then an email, but never got an answer. I don't know how often I tried to call him, but eventually I went to bed. It was a few days later, almost by sheer accident, that I saw Michael's death in a German tabloid. A few days ago, and late in the evening, a man in his mid-thirties had jumped to his death. My jaw dropped, and I stared at the article with wide eyes. What the hell was going on? What the hell had Michael found out that drove him to do this? I felt goosebumps all over my arms, and for a moment a surge of anxiety flushed over me. What had Michael found out that was so terrible? I remembered his last words. I was hearing them over and over in my head during my three-hour car ride to his home. The place was dark and quiet, but looked exactly the same. I didn't know what I was even doing, but I wanted, no, I needed to know what the hell was going on. The front door was locked, as I'd expected, but I found a cracked window that I could open up. I snuck inside and made my way through the messy place until I was back in his living room. Half of his computers were trash. Freaking hell, did he know I'd come here? Then I found a stack of papers on the floor. Some were printouts of stock photos, the others were covered in text. And when I picked them up, they looked like scientific documents. Stage 7. Memory Alteration. Test subjects are infused with artificial memories to create the illusion of a normal life. What the hell was this? I went through the stack and checked another one. Stage 3. Growth Acceleration. Gen manipulation ensures maturity of test subjects in only a fraction of normal human growth period. What was I reading? This made no sense. I checked the rest of them, but they were all the same. Stage 4, Mind Exhilaration. Stage 8, Social Behavior Therapy. And on and on it went. I looked through the whole stack until I found the last one. Stage 13, Project Termination and Future Developments. Test subjects show insufficient results. Project deemed unsuccessful and to be terminated immediately. Euthanasia of remaining test subjects considered unnecessary. To be kept under surveillance to gather information about adaptability to social norms and society. What the hell was this shit? I didn't understand any of it. When I checked the date, I saw that this last document was from early 2017. The same year my parents had died. My head was spinning. This couldn't be real, could it? I went through the stack once again to read more, but then I heard something. The front door was open and there was a shuffling of heavy feet. Do we think he told the other subject? I heard a voice say. Nah, the logs show that he attempted contact, but he didn't share anything. I froze. Shit, who the hell was this? the heavy steps got closer, I told myself I had to get out of there. As fast and quiet as I could, I made my way back to the window and got out. It wasn't even a minute later that I drove off. I had no freaking idea what I just witnessed. Could any of this be real? It had to be a sick joke, hadn't it? But then what about those damn documents that Michael had found? I don't remember much about my drive home. I'm, I was entirely out of it. I still am. Once I went home, I went through my old place and tried to find any information I could about my parents. There's nothing. It seemed to only exist in my memories and in these old photos. The more I think about it, the more I realize how much I don't know about them. Where were they born? How old had they been? Did they get married? And if so, when? As I'm sitting here typing this out, I don't know what to think. Is any of this real? Are my memories real? Am I even a real person? So 
So I want to give a huge thanks to the writer of tonight's story, uh, Rene Wren. Uh, Rene is a very talented writer. He's also a YouTube narrator. You can find his, uh, his channel on YouTube called Rene Writes. And uh, you can also find his book on Amazon. Um, it's titled The Wolf King, Tales with Sharp Teeth. Uh, and there's another book called The First Few Times Always Hurt, a collection of short horror stories by Rene Wren. Uh, please check these out. I'll link them in the description below. And also, please take a look at uh, uh, Rene Wren's YouTube channel. It's also um, very, very good. He's got a lot of videos up there, almost 300 videos. And he's a very talented uh, narrator as well. Thanks for watching today's video, everybody, and please tune in on Wednesday this week. Well, I'll have a, uh, a massive story for, for you all. It's a, a five-part series that has not been narrated before, and I'm very excited to share it with you all. So once again, thanks for watching, and join me again this Wednesday, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Take care. Have a good night, everybody.